Good afternoon, my fellow Tottenham fans, and welcome back to We Are Tottenham TV, bringing you your pre-match pump-up as Tottenham take on Nottingham Forest at 6pm, and it's a huge game today with Villa dropping points yet again yesterday. It's another opportunity for Spurs to take advantage of, and hopefully we can get the job done today. Also, um, big up to um, Slayer Wage. Um, becoming, becoming a new YouTube member as well and um, really appreciate the support and I know the boys Ben and Sim do but as you can see we've got a, a good panel today we've got Kate from Just the Girl Who Loves Spurs welcome in Ashmatic as well from Spurs King TV and Jose from El Tel Cockerell um, so look we'll, we'll get into it I think we're about what 20 minutes out from lineup so I do apologise about being late a few technical issues in the back end that I had to get sorted out but they're sorted and we are here so, look, we'll jump straight into it. I mean, Kate, how are you feeling heading into today's game? And, you know, is there any changes that you want to see made to that lineup? Um, Hello, everyone. And uh, nice to see everyone. And, yeah, make sure everyone smashes a like on the video for Ben and Sim so we don't get sacked. Um, yeah, feeling, um, what's the word, cautiously optimistic. I think it's going to be another squeaky bum time game because Spurs love to do... Uh, do that to us. But yeah, I think we should have enough quality to beat them today. So yeah, cautiously optimistic I'm going with. Cautiously optimistic. Look, I'm sort of saying I think it's going to be a long, frustrating game, maybe similar to West Ham, hopefully because Forest aren't as good as West Ham defensively. Hopefully a few more chances present itself. But uh, uh, Ash, how are you, my man? How are you keeping? How are you heading yes, today? I'm, I'm, I'm good, man. Thanks for having me on, guys, again. Good to see everyone. Big up the panel. Big up to everyone in the chat, man. It's looking popping inside there. So, yeah, man, big up everyone watching at home as well. And, um, yeah, hopefully we can get the job done. And I know it's typical. Every time an opportunity is presented for Spurs to take it, we somehow <laughs> manage to do it the hard way. That's what I'm going to say, do it the hard way. But I'm I'm hoping for a positive result, regardless of the performance. And I am um, wary of what Nuno is going to try and do and upset us on his return back to the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium with the, that that uh, front three trying to run in behind. So, yeah. I'm worried about the return of Nuno, though, despite maybe having a bit of a disastrous campaign at Tottenham when he was here. You know, he will be coming back here with a point to prove. So that makes me a little bit nervous today. But, Jose, how are you, my man? And what's your thoughts heading into today's game? I think we'll go. Sorry, good afternoon to everyone uh, on the panel and everyone in the chat. I think we'll win today. I'm not even up. I'm, I'm not cautious. I think we'll win today. All that I'm after, though, and I keep maintaining is I've seen green shoots in the last two games, seen what we're trying to do and stuff like that. But I just want us to put it all together into one match, into 90 minutes, and I'm hoping that that start is today. Uh, but I'm I'm not even cautious. I think we'll win today. Do you know what? Look, I think many Spurs fans are expecting to win today. It's just how easy do we make it on ourselves, right? You know, I think the argument, I think where the, 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 the nervousness maybe comes in is because for the amount of possession that we have, the amount of time we spend in the opposition turn, we don't do enough in the forward line to maybe take advantage of that. And we end up getting caught out the back end. I think that's probably where the nervousness comes in, right, Kate? Yeah, 100%. Um... Oh, I expect this. This is how I see it going. If I had to put my mystic Meg head on, I see us going one nil down till half time, and then doing what we normally do, please God, and kicking in in the second half and a squeaky bum win. That's how I see it going. I don't see it being comfortable. I think a lot of people are expecting us to just turn up and wallop Nottingham Forest, but they're going to be on a high, and they, you know, Morgan Gibbs White, he's a danger whoever he plays. So yeah, I don't think it's going to be an easy win by any means. Mm. Morgan Gibbs, what well, I'd absolutely love him at Tottenham. I think he's absolutely mm -hmm. a fantastic player. For me, I would love to see a man marking job in there on him today, uh, Ashmatic, you know, because I think if you stop him from playing, you take out the threat of Hudson, Adoya, Langer, Chris Wood, who really all feed off him, who drives Nottingham Forest into that final third. Yeah, I think it's important that he has a quiet game. I think he was exceptional against Fulham. Um, remember, Fulham dealt with us 3 0 not too long ago, and they dealt with um, Fulham. So, and Morgan Gibbs White was key to that. I think when we played them last time, obviously, Basuma got sent off. And I think towards the end of the um, the last 15 or 20 minutes, they started to pin us back a bit more. And we looked like the team on the counter attack. And I think the reason for that being is they brought an extra attacker on. I'm surprised they didn't start with him at the time, but that was Callum Hudson Madoy. I thought Alango was a man that gives us problems, 
But I thought the space, especially at the fullback, sometimes we stand off the wingers and we allow crosses into the box. So you've got Hudson Madoy crossing the ball into the box. You've got Callum, um, sorry, you've got um, Alango crossing the ball into the box. And sometimes Poro doesn't block those crosses coming in. So I can see where the the problems can lie moving on. Like, uh, I, I agree with the panel. I do think that, um, you know, we, we'll get the job done. But there are a few, like, niggling things where you're thinking, okay, you know, they're going to be super confident. However, that could play into our hands. If they're more front-footed and they're not going to sit off us, then they're going to be in our half a little bit more than they would usually. And that could create space in behind. I think Spurs... Our biggest strength is the when we've got space in behind and we can utilize the players like your, your Johnsons, your Verners to run into that space. Do you know what I mean? Son on the shoulder. So I think the difference between, I mean, uh, uh, West Ham and Nottingham Forest is I think they came off the back of a loss, but they were a bit more pragmatic. And I think with Nuno, I think he's a bit more optimistic coming on from the back of that win. Maybe they will push up that pitch. And then we can ask them more questions. Do you know what I mean? If we get an early goal, then maybe they will low block it a little bit and be a bit more cautious. So well, it all depends what happens. We did score early against West Ham. So it was a bit of a change for, for what we normally do. We normally wait for the second half to turn up. But um, I, it'll be interesting to see for me if we, because we play quite narrow, in my opinion, it'll be interesting to see if we open up a little bit more and we come a little bit wider and we let the, the wingers hutch the tug line, touch line a little bit more just to create that space, you know what I mean? Because when we're build up in our central and we're quite narrow, teams find it easy to defend against us. They do two backs of four because we're super narrow. Now we like to progress the ball up centrally. And then before you know it, Madison's trying to take a shot. Son's trying to take a shot. And there's so many bodies in the way. And we get frustrated. Oh, we're moving it too slow. Oh, we're moving it too. We're not doing it quick enough. We're not taking a shot quick enough. And so it'll be interesting to see if we if we adapt and we kind of, not adapt, but if we tweak, you know, in, in that formation, um, in that build-up play, sorry. Mm -hmm. Just quickly, the Belgian Hotspur says, this is my dream panel, big up all, come on, you Spurs, big up the Belgian Hotspur, really appreciate the support, my man, top guy, top guy. Um, but look, I mean, Jose, where are you with it? Because I see a lot of, yeah, I, I sort of, I, I understand what Ashmatic is saying, you know, to, to a degree, um, you know, I disagree that we're too, too that we're too narrow at times. I do think we try to go wide a lot of times. Like in the early games of the West Ham, we hit them out wide. You know, Werner was had Kufal on the back foot, but Werner stopped doing that when he was starting to get the ball again. He kept on passing it back, coming back inside. That's the South Bay problem on him. Judson, on the other hand, was direct, but also, you know. I don't understand why the midfield stopped putting the ball out wide there for a period. You know, it's like they took it upon themselves just to start going central. I mean, what I what I fail to understand is are some of these guys like sort of you know not clued in when it comes to the tactics and stuff like that? Because you know, us fans knew exactly what West Ham were going to do: block up the middle, play a low block and stuff like that. They would have been grilled on it all week. So I don't understand why they start going centrally all of a sudden when we're absolutely burning. West Ham out wide, but for me, this is a bigger part of Tottenham. I think the defence is, is is good. I think the goalkeeper's good. The midfield, to a large part, I think, you know, do their job. They get us into the final third, but I just feel like in the final third, we really lack that sort of, that drive, that je ne sais quoi, that belief, you know, that creativity, that, that sort of something different, Jose. I mean, do you want to see changes to that front three today? Because for me, when I look at it, I think they're three individuals rather than that cohesive unit that, that, that we look at other teams in the Premier League have. To start off with, I think Ash's Ash's point is on point with the about the midfield. The midfield seems to play in triangle, right? And the triangle seems to be right down the centre of the pitch. We're not playing out. We're not moving that triangle. Instead of being like that, we need to open up so you've got three across the middle and and get the ball up to our forwards. Even if they hug the touchlines, we've got to get up to the forwards early. We seem to dwell on the ball too long in midfield and not get the ball up. If you're going to play in that triangle, as I, as I call it, with Madison at the spearhead of it, then you need the two fullbacks to be pushing on, as the, the invert, as we call it, to push on. And it seems to be that we seem to do it late on in games. We seem to go to the system that I think we should be doing earlier. We seem to do it late in games in the second half. Um, what I'd like to see from the front three, Dave, I was talking about the Liverpool front three that they had when they had Firmino, Mane and Salah. And then front three, they would interchange right across the line. All three of them could play mm -hmm. across the line. 
And I, I think that we've got forwards in the three forwards. I think they're going to start today in Werner Johnson and um, Sonny. I think we've got three players that can also do that as well. However, it seems to be that the tactics that they are given are strict, that they can't move off the size that they're playing on. And I'd like to see a bit more fluidity. Um, obviously, I'm not Ange Postacoglu, but I'd like to see a bit more fluidity. But I think, um, actually, the, the, the nail on the head, I've been saying it for, for a while now, our midfield, we've got great midfielders, but we just seem to dwell on the ball for too long and we're not getting the ball up and wide uh, and in between the channels and in half spaces enough. Uh, we get speed of thought and our game changes completely. Do you know what? I, 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 we'll find out where Kate sits. I sort of disagree with it. I think the forward line do get enough ball. I think, like, you know, we spend large periods in the final third. I think the midfield end up taking a lot of blame because the forward line ain't anywhere near as potent or as devastated as they could be. They're very boring in possession. And what I mean by that is you look at Liverpool, for instance, they knock on the door, they batter it down, they put balls in from everywhere, they take shots. We just do a lot of sideways passes. We don't take many risks in the forward area. And naturally, when you do that, you're allowing everyone to sort of get back behind the ball. Now, don't get me wrong. There are times at times this season when I do think, like, for instance, West Ham the other night, they were caught with six, seven players up the field. And in the midfield, did slow it down and allow them to get back and get reset. There is that element to it. But for me, I just don't think that front line is good enough. And I think the people missed the point. You know, I hear this a lot about this fluid front tree, and I do get it. But as no one asked the question, why has Liverpool gone back to a big, traditional, strong man down the middle in Nunes? Why did Man City go to a big, strong, traditional striker in Haaland down the middle? The reason why is Man City done a documentary on Netflix that's only released. And they said, because it's not, it's you can't, with the way teams are getting set up and better tactically and defensively, you can't just rely on popping the ball around and stuff like that. Sometimes you do have to put the ball in the box and have that guy to go and attack it. You know, people make out like this fluid front tree is a team. Pep Guardiola only, only used it for one season because that summer he tried to sign Harry Kane and couldn't get him. The following summer he went and got Haaland and they went back. For me, I don't, I just don't think that front tree has it. I do think that I would like to see changes in that front tree today, personally. Um, but look, we'll wait and see what Posta Cogley puts out. But look, Kate, where are you at with it? Are you, you know, do you see it from my point of view or do you see it from from Ashes and uh, Jose's? I agree with you, Dave. I mean, you you had me when you started speaking French. I would have agreed with you, whatever you said, because you spoke French <laughs> yeah. to me. So, uh, missing that, je ne sais quoi. I, I just find the three the three um, forward players just that they, they are like three individuals. You know, when we used to watch Son and Kane, they knew exactly what the other one's thinking. So One, two, it didn't matter yeah. what. Yeah, there there seems to be that lack of connection and communication between the three of them. So they never look fluid. Um, it always looks like they're just playing as, as an individual rather than as as a three, which I think is something that will come with time, I hope. Um, but there's, you know, Son was just starting to develop a relationship with Solomon and then Solomon got out. And then I haven't mm. really seen him develop a relationship with either of the other two yet. So for me, it seems like no one wants to take a risk and have a shot and just go for it. They're trying to sort of walk it into the net, if you like. And that's what's so frustrating mm. because we're getting... I mean, there were some times um, during the last game where Werner, the, some of the balls that were coming in and Werner was in the wrong positions and... It's so frustrating to watch because our attack has always been the focal point of us. You know, we've, mm. we've had Kane and Son and everything. You always knew we was going to score because we had Kane and Son. And now I look at it sometimes and just think where, where the goal is going to come from. And, you know, and if they if not in the forest do play more of a low block, Sonny's going to be sort of, I don't know, Sonny's going to get into the game again. So, yeah, I mm. get what you're saying. I was hoping Richardson would be fit for this game because I wanted to see him in the middle and Sonny on the left. But obviously he's... He's got his knee problem. So, but yeah, I do. I agree with everything you've said, Dave, to be honest. And look, probably despite me saying that, I think, I think you probably will see the same front tree today. Look, one change I would make personally is I'd put Kulu up front. I think it's a different game altogether when you're playing with your back two goal rather than running at the goal and stuff like that. And I think against these sort of teams, that's what it requires. But Ash, there was a lot of debate around... Son off the back of the West Ham game. You know, some people are saying, look, you've got to put him into a position where he's running at that low block rather than playing with his back against it, where he can sort of affect the game. And other people are saying, look, forget that. Look at his goal scoring stats. You've got to play him through the middle. I mean, where do you want to see Son play today? Um, I think if you look at the season overall, I think he's scored the most goals down the middle, if I'm being totally honest. Mm -hmm. 
I do hear the point where he can play out wide because let's face it, Son is a wide forward. He's not. He even said it himself. He said, "I'm not a number nine. Like, and he was referring to Richarlison at that point. But I want him to have a bit more confidence in himself because I do think, in terms of like movement and hold up play at times, hold up play, he's not the worst at it. He's not the worst at it. And people look at his physicality and they say, oh, you know, he's not physical enough, blah, blah, blah. But he doesn't lose it in that key area. And I think if Who's you don't... Son? son, yeah. Son, for me, like... He lost a number of times in that area against West Ham. I, me, personally, I don't think he loses it in areas where, like, we're in the build-up. That's what I'm talking about, in that transition. Higher up the pitch, sometimes we were getting crowded out because I think Moyes changed it because we were cutting through them so easily. In the mm. first half, I think our central progression was really good. And in the second half, they said, oh, you know what? We've got to change this up. And then I think that's when we started getting crowded out in the midfield, mm. in that box, even in that final third. And I think that's where the problem started to lie. But as I said before, I think when Son's on the shoulder, you're going to see the best of him. Do you know what I mean? He's that mm. kind of wide forward. He's not that kind of box number nine. Mm. But I still like his movement up front. And if you've got... We have to play Werner. I feel like there's, there's our front three picks itself at the moment because Richie is out, so we have to go with a, a Werner, Son, and well, Kudu could get in there. I hear what you're saying with the false nine because he's got a bit more physicality and he can drop into the pocket and look after it. And then the two forwards could probably run in behind him. But I just think against this particular game, Forest mm. defensively, they're not super physical. I don't really rate them as a like a West Ham. Do you know what I'm saying? West mm. Ham will. Dominant in that area. For me, Sonny's movement, he's got, to, he's got to be on the move a lot more. He's got to bend his runs, a lot more clever with his timing as well. Then he can get his shot off. I think he needs to shape to shoot a lot earlier as well. He wants to get a touch, make it all pretty before he hits the, mm -hmm. hits the ball. I think if he just takes it in his stride certain times in that kind of crowded, congested area, he'll start to find that his shot might deflect. It might go in. It might come off the key pass. It deflects back and then we score a goal off the back of that. So I think we just need to, in moments... We need to be like, just take a shot, just have a go, like Kate was saying. Do you know what I'm saying? If we're not doing that and we're trying to find a perfect moment to score the goal, we're going to be frustrated again, like in the second half against West Ham. So that's where I stand on that. I still say you, you have to start that front three because you go with the three that's on form. Kulu, um, you know, I didn't wasn't as mad as the rest of the community was with him. You know, everyone was like, oh, yes. Oh, no. I did see moments, though, the chance. I did see moments where I said, okay, cool. He's opening his body up. He's trying to switch the play. Da, 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 da. But, you know, we expect a lot more from Kulu, especially like decision-making's letting him down. He's very slow upstairs, in my opinion. I think if he's quicker upstairs, he makes that decision quicker. If he's a lot braver on the ball, then you see a lot more output from him. But, yeah, that that's just where I stand. I think that's why the front three starts the way it is, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Jose, where are you at with that front tree? Do you want to see a bit of a, a change across that front tree? Do you agree with uh, Ash? You probably will see the same front tree today. I think we'll see the same front three. However, I do get your point that you've said in previous uh, chats that we've had, Dave, that it, you Richarlison's fit, you try and get him in, in that nine slot mm. and put uh, Sonny out because that means that you're bringing in double figures from two of our players into the team. Mm. Um but yeah, as we all know, Richie's not going to be around this yeah. weekend. And and the thing is, is that I actually think that Kulu needs a rest. Uh, Kulu's done a lot throughout the season. He had our back, uh, and he was a, the, the ultimate team player for the first half of the season. Took a battering for us in in lots of different positions that he played. And he's gone off the ball a bit recently. So therefore, I think by resting him, I'm hoping that um, oh, you got rested the last game. If he gets rested today. Uh, then I'm hoping that he comes back firing and, you know, energetic. His levels are back up and we can start mm. seeing a, a, a different Kulu. So I think we will start. I think we're forced near enough to start with the same three. Mm. No, the look, lineup, I, the lineups have just been mm, announced, by the way. Yeah, I'm going to bring it in here now. Uh, look, uh, we, we have gone with the same front three. I can tell people that. Give me one second. I'll bring it up. Um, look. It'll be interesting to see how they get on today. Personally, I think Ange would have done them himself a favour by changing it up a little. But look, we'll see how they get on today. But Vicario is in goals. Pedro Porro at right back. Romero Van Aven at centre back with Destiny Adoji at left back. One change to the team. Basuma starts in the number six with Sar coming back in for Bentoncourt. 
which I'd be interested to hear your guys' thoughts on because I thought Bendico was superb against West Ham with Madison retaining his place, Johnson, Son and Werner as the front three. Then we also have Austin on the bench, Royale, Dragerson, Davies, Hoiberg, Bendico, Lissasso, Kulizeski and Dane Scarlett all make the bench. That is the starting lineup. I'll leave it up for a couple more minutes for everyone out there. But guys, one change. I mean, uh, sorry for Bentico. Um, do you agree with that? Um, yeah, I mean, I made some notes before I come on because I'm organised and I put my start in midfield would be Saab, Asuma and Madders. So I wanted to start in. Um, oh, yeah, I picked the same three. I've just realised. I just read it in a different order. So, yeah, that's exactly what I would have done. But I did write in small letters next to it. Bring on Benton Kerr later. So that that is how I would yeah. start it. I think Saab's been our most consistent midfielder. Bring him on. Soak up the pressure in the first half. Then we want when we want that little bit more creativity in the second half, perhaps take mm. um Saar off and bring on a Basuma and go for it. But I think saar has been had a great season and yeah, I think he, he's done the right three. I think that's mm. exactly what I would have done. Mm. No, look, I really like Sar. I agree with you. I think he's been absolutely sensate. I'd argue he's been our most consistent midfielder, probably our best midfielder this season. Mm -hmm. But I would say I thought Bentico was very impressive in delivering that ball into the front tree continuously against West Ham. So it's an interesting call to make. But uh, Ash, I mean, James Madison keeps his place despite many people being frustrated with him. And look, we can't pretend, you know, he hasn't come back and ripped trees up since his injury. You know, he sort of failed to impact games in the way that we want him to. Some would make the argument he was much better against West Ham, but Pasta Cogbrew has took him off early twice against Luton and against West Ham when we've both been chasing goals. I mean, what's going on with Madison? And, uh, you know, is Pasta Cogbrew right to stick by him again today? Yeah, I think Madison's the vice captain. He's one of the vice captains, so I, I didn't expect him to lose his position. I just think sometimes that he probably looks at him. He's trying to manage um, Madison, considering the amount of injuries he's, he's had this season and throughout his career. So maybe he looks at him and says, "Look, I need you in this important part of the season. It's the business end. Um, I might sacrifice you in some of these games, but in the big games, that's when I need you to turn up." But uh, yeah, I agree, man, with most of the fans where. He was starting to grow into that game. He was starting to go out wide at times to switch the play, get on the ball. He wasn't just dropping deep like he normally does, like he did in the first half. I thought mm -hmm. second half, he started to move up the pitch and started to ask a few more questions, try to get on the ball, even try to take shots, got blocked. <laughs> but I could see in his face, he was very disappointed about, you know, taking off, getting taken off when he was like, you know, just started to find a bit of momentum, a bit of form there. Um, so, yeah, I, I did expect him to start again. I would have been shocked if they did take him off. Um, the Celso um, has did come on very late, in my opinion. I thought he could have come on a bit earlier. Um, I just thought that with Le Celso being the like for like swap, people we brought on Kulizeski instead of him. And with Kulizeski, what he tends to do is drift off wide. I feel like he drops, he drifts off wide almost like a second winger and links up with Johnson and Poro instead of holding that central position at times. So I just felt Lacelso would be more of a. But, but my criticism of Lacelso is obviously his availability, and that's what frustrates most of us Spurs fans. But he's very one-footed, in my opinion. So when he gets the ball, he doesn't release it quick enough at times because he's got to turn onto his favourite foot then to release it. But other than that, I think technically he's really good, and he has scored a couple goals like more times than not, important ones in that as well. Um, when he has showed up, but he came on in the last 10 minutes when he did, did come on, and we do have that option. I do agree with you guys, going back to the um, Benton Core point, that Benton Core played really well. I do agree with Kate's point because I think with the missing creativity, mm. it's better to bring him on then, where the game's a little bit tighter, as mm. opposed to bringing on Saar. I, I get what Saar does. He brings you energies and engine, legs, you know. He wants the ball the time. He's busy. He's all about. Um, so, uh, what I did notice, and I looked at the um, positions of the players on, on the map, the average positions, and Basuma starts a lot closer to the centre-backs compared to a Benton core, who was a lot more closer to the attacking three. So it just tells me that one of them kind of sits and then one of them goes up. And I've noticed that when uh, Saf starts, he's always busy-bodied. So he's like one of the eights that pick up the ball and they, like kind of transports it to you know, the forward players. And then just in case the teams break on us, you have like maybe one player that's a little bit more disciplined 
that kind of helps to mop up just in case or slow down the attack at least, just in case, you know, just until all the other players get back. So, mm. but yeah, going back to your point, Madison, I think, yeah, I think um, he needs to up his game. Um, mm. we, we know the levels he can produce, and I think that's why the fan base are frustrated with him. However, I don't think he's been playing that poor, in my opinion. I just do like to see him further up the pitch rather than getting the ball on the halfway line, trying to pick it up, dictate that way. No, we need you in the final third, my friend. Let the other players do that and then affect the game that way. Mm. Look, I, I think Posta Coglu is right to stick with James Madison. Look, I hear what people say about Lasalso, but I think he's similar bracket to Hoiberg. I don't think there's any plans for them next season, so I don't think that's why you'll see him drop a Madison for someone like Lasalso. But look, when it comes to Madison, I don't feel sorry for him whatsoever either. You know, we can sit here and use this excuse coming back from injury. But, you know, against West Ham, he picked up the ball twice and put it over the fullback's head onto Johnson's toes. I watched Roderick used to do that about 25, 30 times a game back in the day. There's no excuse for Madison to, to shy away like that. You know, you, you do have that ability to get on the ball and go and make things happen. It's almost like he's sitting there waiting for something to sort of come his way rather than actually go after it and try and make things happen. And for me, you know, we brought him in here to be that guy in that final third, you know, tread that pass. Because right now, all, all we're relying on is Werner and Johnson to beat their man on the outside and get across across the six-yard box. We talk about variety in attack. That's where Madison needs to come to the fore. He has that ability to play the balls from different angles, slide them in between the centre back and the full back and stuff like that. So for me, I want to see him do it. You know, he's got one of the freest roles in this team. Literally, his main task is get free and go and create. And too many times I see him pick up the ball or people give him the ball, expecting him to go and make something happen. And he gives it off to the next guy. And they're all standing there looking at him like, What are you here to do, James? You know, for me. I just want to see him take more onus about the game and actually go and try and dictate a game that his, his, his ability actually allows him to do. So that's where I'm at with that. Um, Jose, um, you know, Posta Coglu, the lineup is out there. I mean, what's your thoughts on it, General? Just one change to the starting lineup. Did, did you want to see more? Uh, I, I thought, well, I thought there's going to be a toss up. In the midfield, there's always a toss up. In the midfield, we've got four players and we can only put three into the four. So the person that's taken his turn on the bench today is Bentoncourt. I thought Bentoncourt played well in the last game, but then equally I thought Basuma did well in the last game as well. Uh, mm. The poorest out of our three I felt in the last game was Madison. Um, Madison basically is on audition time at the moment because obviously we want him to play well because we pay plays wages and we want him to play well for us. But there's a lot, there's a lot of players in the Premiership on current form at the moment that maybe getting ahead of him in the pecking order for the Euros. So mm. he needs to step up, both for us and in order to make sure that he's on the plane over to Germany because, yeah, there's some of these other players are catching him up. Um, mm. And, you know, in the shop window at the moment, they're putting themselves about there. And we do need him to start playing. He hasn't been the same player since he came back from injury. And we just mm. need him to step up. And, and, and for, for us as a team and as a fan base, we want him mm. to step up. But then also for himself, as a player, professional at the club, but then also to get his spot on that plane. Um, we need to see more of him. But yeah, as I said, we've got four good midfielders at the club and four into three don't mix. So one's always going to be left out. Mm. And today it just happens to be Benton Corp. Mm. I just, I just feel bad for Benton Corp because he's waited so long to sort of put in that level of performance mm. since his return from injury. You know, and when he does it, then he's dropped to the bench. But look, it might make him even more hungry, even more determined heading into sort of next season to reclaim his spot. So it might actually come back and benefit us in the long run. But look, again, you know, it's better than in years gone by when we're arguing about, you know, Winks or Skip coming off the bench to try and change the game. So I suppose, <laughs> you know, we are improving slowly in that, in that regard. But guys, maybe last question I have for you, we'll go around the panel and then we'll let everyone plug themselves as well before we end off. Short one today because of a late start and I also have to get on and do my own watch long where I'm an absolute scream, by the way. But, um, you know, um, what I would say is, uh, is, is today a must win? I want to know off everybody. If we drop points today, is, is t- finishing inside top four over? Forget coefficient points and stuff like that. But if we don't win today, another opportunity missed. I think Ash alluded to it earlier on. Fulham missed the opportunity when Villa dropped points. West Ham, we missed the opportunity when Villa drop points and when you look at some of the games we've got coming up Chelsea away never really win there Liverpool away don't really do well there Man City North London Derby Newcastle away which we don't do traditionally well there over the years either you know we've got very few games where we should be putting three points on the board so Kate in your in your opinion is today a must win no excuses 
Is it that do or die for top four? Um, I don't think it's do or die in the fact that if we lose, we're definitely not going to get top four. But at the same time, I think it's a must win. There should be absolutely no excuses at all. We've got our best 11 available, really. Um, yeah, for me, if we don't win, questions are going to be asked. I expect the meltdown to be absolutely monumental again. And, uh, you know, we need to take advantage. Villa looked at drop points again, you know. And mm. so, yeah, for me, it is a must win. But all is not lost if we don't win. If that mm. makes sense, mm. that's kind of a bit fancy, well, uh, but you know. <laughs> no, look, I hear what you're saying. I just, I, I do hear what you're saying. I just, when I look at it, you know, for me, look, I, if if we don't win today, you're more hoping that Villa keeps slipping up. You know, that, that game, one of them games in hand, we have is Chelsea away. We don't. We, and I just think we make it harder on ourselves. However, Ash, I'm going to contradict myself here. That's what a great host does. Um. <laughs> But, you know, on the other hand, we have performed well against the bigger teams this year. Man City earlier on the season, Arsenal, Liverpool, you know, we have we have turned up in the big games. We're, you know, so, you, you know, again, is it do or die today? Yeah, like for me, it's about trying to build momentum going into these big games. And like you said, we, we tend to like do it the hard way, you know, typical Spurs. We don't want to like take the easy route. We want to just turn up a... But saying that, like the record against Chelsea at the um, Stamford Bridge, it's not good. So we we need to um, we need to change that in order for us to to make a difference. But like looking towards this game, I think the boy is getting the job done. That sends a statement out to to, to Villa. Um, how many times have we had these opportunities where we've we've kind of yeah. Let slip through our hands. I think that's where the meltdown would be because it's like same old Spurs. Things never change. It's that kind of energy, if that makes sense. And that's why everyone's expecting a win. Forest are seventeenth, I believe, in the in the table. Yeah. Um, you know they got deducted points, so they're going to be up for it because they're in a relegation battle. They spent over two hundred mil, or however much they spent, and they 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 need to stay in the Premier League. They need that money, you know. Um, so everything's riding on them for this game, um, especially with Burnley winning the other day. So I think um, they, they, yeah, it's a massive game for them. But for us, equally, we're at home, so you expect the home team to have the advantage. After the draw, you know, people weren't happy. We need to come out with like a statement. You know what I'm saying? We need to come out with a better performance because at the moment with we're, we're all this possession what does it mean like everyone was happy at the start of the season attacking football yes possession yes we're in the half yes but if you're not doing anything with it and you're not making you know you're not standing out against these smaller teams then we're not really looking like a top top six team do you know what i mean i hate to say the word top six as well i want spurs to be in its own bracket and i i don't like to compare us against the other teams i, I don't want to watch what they're doing i want to just know that come the game day we just do our thing, you know what I'm saying? We we come out, we've got our own brand. People call it push pull back in the day. Back in my day, I used to call it pass and move. You know what I'm saying? That's what we used to do. But that's what I want to see. I want us to, and sometimes you do need to see a little bit of genius, a bit of throwback, because if teams are gonna stink it out and are gonna do a low block, you kind of need one or two players just to kind of do a little mazy run, dribble, drop the shoulder, do something, bap a shot from outside the box. That's what we're paying our money for. We're just paying the highest money out of all the fans in Europe, you know, we're not just the league, like, you know what I mean, across the world. So just give us our money's worth. Do you know what I'm saying? And not just that, man. We're passionate Spurs fans. So we, we've had it for so long where it's been so bad or we've just been like nearly men or like the bridesmaid, never the bride. Like I'm sick of this, like, you know, narrative. Spursy, what everyone, bottlers. Because if we don't win today, that's what we're going to be called. Don't ever get it twisted. You know what I'm saying? So we need to kind of turn up against these smaller teams, put our foot down, show our marker and show that we're serious about this. You know what I'm saying? And even Ange come out and said, he said, you know what? I hey, forget this top four. I'm more than interested. I'm just saying, look, we finish where we finish. I'm more focusing on trying to play good football and get the results to follow. Simple as that. So, or, or I'm what me myself, I'm not even interested in the top four. Like a lot of people, season ended when we went at the cups, and rightly so. But I still saw it as a transitional team season, sorry, as transitional season. So I wanted to see a strong, positive style of play and be consistent with it. 
even if we don't get the result, we still have a style of play and you said, you know what, at least I can see where we're going. You know, like that. That's what it is for me. So that, that's that's all I want to see moving forward. Um, Forest do have a threat, but I'm not interested in it. I'm just interested in what we're doing. Simple as that. I'm a fan uh, and that's it, bro. Call it basic. <laughs> you know what I mean? But yeah. and, and look, you know, what, what you were saying there with Posta Coglu, I actually think he's got a lot right this season. You know, when you... When we talk about earlier on the season, you know, we were much better at this system earlier on in the season than what we are now. Now, when we come up against teams, you know, I think they've they've converted. They don't play that high line against us anymore. They all come and sort of sit low block and try and hit us on the counter. So they've asked different questions of us. But I think when I look at this season, I think the majority of it right. I think the base is right to build off. I just think you bring in a better forward line that's more important. That's at every single game. I think you you know really elevate what we're seeing right now. You know from a team that's doing well possession based football and maybe lack that sort of you know that cutting edge in the final third. You bring in a couple of quality players here in that final third. I really think it could make a difference. Um, so I, I do agree with you on that aspect, Ash. I think, I think, I think, you know, this year has been a transitional period and stuff. And I think there's enough for me to say going into next season, Postacog who's the right guy, go and give him the keys for that forward line. And uh, uh, let's go. You know, I think he's had a lot to deal with this season, a hell of a lot to deal with. It, it, um, will, take not, time. it will take time. It will take time. I think where the fans are frustrated is we don't what, have, we've been, we've been waiting, you know what I'm saying? I think the fans are running out of patience. That's why there was booze at half time against West Ham. Was no, 100%. Uh, Lutus, uh, Lutus, sorry, Lutus was booze, no, look, was 100%. I fully get that, you know. I do fully yeah. get that the patience with the trophies and stuff, fully get it. But in terms of Ange Postacoglu, you know, you take your frustrations away, put your frustrations on the ownership by all means. But in terms of Ange Postacoglu, you know, don't, don't don't try and get him muddled up within the frustrations towards the ownership. Some point you have to sit look at it and say, you know, he's the right guy going forward. Whether the board do their part or not, that's up to them. But is Ange the right guy going forward? And I would I would suggest yes for sure. But Jose, for you, do or die today, top four. I agree with most of what you th the three of you say. The only thing that I'll say for people that know me, I don't give two wasps in the whirlwind what our opponents do or those around us. I only care about what we do. We go, we play our game, front foot today, we win this game. End of story. There's no point, there's no point, you know, dwelling. We'll be in fourth place after tonight's game with a game in hand. So, you know, at the end of the day, forget, I'm not concentrating on anything other than our own performance. We've got a mm. team, it's been announced, them 11 should be able to go and do a job today. End of story. I, too many times I hear people saying, yeah, let's look at their Elanga and let's look at their Morgan Gibbs White and Cudson Nadoys. I hear this about West Ham. Look at their kudos. Look at this. Every team we play against, we're always looking at their players. Let's look at our own team. Our team, that 11, is good enough to go out, get the three points. Fourth place is ours tonight, this evening. Well, hopefully, Jose, next year we'll be winning most games, so we won't have to worry about opposition, and we'll we'll sort of gain that arrogance. I think right now the way why people sort of maybe sit there and go, let's look at this player and that player, is because they know we sort of are our our own enemies, our own downfall. But hopefully next season, when when the football's a lot better and a lot more important, and we're winning back to back, we hopefully we'll just have conversations about ourselves rather than the opposition, which I do agree with you. For me, I just want to hear people talk about Tottenham all the time, and absolutely not, and that's absolutely spot on there. But look, guys, I, I will have to end it off because I do have to get across and get my own watch along and that up and running. Uh, but we are going to go around and let everyone plug themselves. So, Kate, where 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 can people find you? And why do they need to get over and smash that subscribe button? Should we do score predictions first? Oh, and, and your score prediction, my bad. Okay. I'm going for 2-1, squeaky bum. Um, and a bit of positives. If we win today, we, we hit 60 points, which is actually what we finished on last season. So... I'm going for a squeaky bum 2-1. And you can find me, um, just to go with Love Spurs, every week, uh, day lunchtime, um, we do a show, all different shows. Um, we cover all the teams in the Premier League, but mainly Spurs. So, yeah, come on over. We have uh, Queen Ellie Hoybier on there. We have Chang. We have my husband. And it's always a good giggle. So, please do come mm. over. No, I'll get over there and support great uh, support Kate. Great, passionate Spurs fan. Good guests on as well. Sometimes you see me pop up there. So if you fancy me or you're a fan of me, you know, you can find me over there at times. So make sure you get over and show Kate the love. And of course, you know, wonderful addition here, uh, you know, that Ben and Tim brought into these shows. So, uh, you know, make sure you get over and show the love there. Ashmatic, uh, what's going on over here at Spurs Kings TV, my man? 
Spurs Kings TV. Um, yeah, man, post match analysis. Um, so, post match straight away after the game. Um, that's tonight. We've got analysis I'm going to do on Tuesday. Um, Wednesday, we do a rival show, which is always a laugh as well. But um, yeah, and previews coming up as well. There's a previews coming up. Just there's a mismatch of things on our channel, mix mash of people, different opinions, blah, blah, blah. Um, score predictions, score predictions. I'm saying boom, 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 boom. I'm gonna have to say a one-one. I'm joking now. Two one Spurs again. Two one is, I think we'll can see the set piece. <laughs> Some type of cross will go in, like. Um, but yeah, I think we'll have more than enough to get the job done. Um our boss, our boy Sonny, you know, he's got the record of um, the other day of, of the amount of games and the amount of goals he's scoring. And I think it's been an emotional time for him, if I'm being totally honest. And I think the fan base and, and the boys, the team support around him has been absolutely magnific magnificent of late. So, yeah, I just um, I hope that kind of translates on the pitch. And um, also, Lo Celso, the reason why I mentioned earlier, he also had a, a milestone of 100 games for Spurs as well. So maybe he can come on to a round of applause and maybe he can do something as well, man. But um, look, as long as Spurs get the job done, I'm happy, man. They're all Spurs players at the moment. So whatever our opinions are of the, of the players, I just hope they, they do the job for us and we get the win. Look, when it comes to this, uh, first of all, actually, make sure you do get over to Spurs King TV and smash the subscribe Make sure you do get over to Spurs King TV and smash the subscribe on our Smatics channel. A, a very nice guy. And do you know what? A lot of people tell me they love it, hearing talk, him talking about, you know, tactics and breaking stuff down and stuff like that. So it seems to be sort of, uh, what's that called? Selling point or whatever, have you? Not, it's not the right word. But, you know, make sure you get over to Ash and, and smash that subscribe channel. And there's not only him there, there's Marlon there as well, who's another great guy. Um, so, and Has as well. So make sure you get over there and check them out. When it comes to the Celso, I don't want to hear anyone moan about not winning anything and then applauding the Celso for his... 100th appearance at Tottenham Hotspur because he's been a massive part of why we haven't won anything. So uh, when it comes to that, I don't want to see anyone applaud them and they're not about winning anything. But uh, hold it, my man. <laughs> where, where can people find you? What's going on over at Eltown? Hashtag free La Celso. Hashtag viva la patria. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, um, right, yes. So... so um, as I said earlier, I want to see Tottenham for once put everything that we're doing in glimpses in games to put it all together today. So this is more in hope. I said we're going to win the game anyway, but more in hope. I'm looking for a complete 90 minute performance and I'm going for a 4 0 victory, um, which will make uh, Kate's husband very happy because he's gone for 4 0 as well. Um, we'll have to check on him later if we win 4 0, make sure he's all right. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> But yeah, I can I can be found on El Tel Cockerel. Um, usually do shows daily and uh, a bit different. It's a bit of a mishmash. I do a mop up show on a Thursday, which is a bit of a light hearted show. Um, and we do a view from Asia, which we get some uh, people from the other side of the world to host shows on a Wednesday morning. And then I do a ladies takeover on a Friday morning. Apart from the shows that I already do, so yeah, if you want to come and give us a watch, uh, a like or, or sub to us, come to Hotel Cockerel. Be appreciated. And guys, make sure you show all these three people love. You know, uh, on, on their various channels, they give up their time to come here, and um, you know, and support me in this show and stuff like that. So make sure you can get over there and show them the same love. They do make time go by quicker leading up to games. So uh, hopefully, they'll make your week go quicker as well with all the content they're producing. And last but not least, if you love me, um, you know, so I'm like Marmite. Some people do, some people don't. But uh, if you do, if you are one of them who do like Marmite, please get over to my channel. Check me out. The link is there at the Irish Hotspur. But guys, I'm also going to ask a quick score prediction. Oh, do you know what? I'm going to go 2-0 today. Um, I'm going to keep a clean sheet. I, I, I back the boys to keep one today. Um, but not so confident we'll get four because that front line really irks me. However, that's more and more conversations for during the week to have here on We Are Totten TV. Make sure you stay tuned here for their watch along coming up very, very shortly. That's it from us. Come on, you Spurs. In Come the mighty hands we trust, we never stop. Let's go. Come on, you Spurs. <laughs>